Hello everyone, it's Andy Glenn here from Sharks TV with a, a special international podcast today. I'm joined by Sharks goalie consultant, Mr Colin Grubb. Colin, how are you doing? I'm good, Andy. How are you? I'm okay, I'm okay. What's the weather like in uh, Texas right now? Uh, it's nice today, actually. Um, Cam before the storm, um, Monday it's supposed to to be really cold there's a a weather front coming down off the rocky mountains um and it's meant to get to to you in your terms it's to get to like minus 16 celsius so oh wow i was expecting cold. i was expecting to create some sort of gag here about it being the same here in dumfries as, as in uh in texas but actually it sounds yeah. like you're going to get worse yeah like today it's like 24 25 and then it's i'm saying there's a system coming in Normally, they don't make it as far this far south, um, but uh, sometimes it does, and we get these freak weather uh, incidents. So it's not good. Anyway, enough enough chat about the weather. Let's talk about what we're here to talk about: a goalkeeper special. You're a goalie consultant, Brett. What what does that actually do then? Um, so me and the goalies talk sometimes daily. Uh, sometimes weekly over the holiday period there we, we, we had a spell where there was obviously so many games in quick succession that uh, it, it was we waited and, and then we done kind of a big um, chat with, with Curtis and went through all I want to say five games in a row but basically I uh, remotely help help those guys um, break down their game um and we talk through certain scenarios, good and bad. You know, we're not we're obviously looking for the positives in there too and reinforcing that. But uh yeah, just try to help them mentally be prepared, uh, go through stuff that they can maybe work on on their own on practice and, and ultimately try and make them better and make the team better. Okay, so you're working with Logan Curtis and Callum, yes? Yeah, so obviously it's Low, uh, Curtis and, and Callum's games that we're, we're breaking down and we invite Logan on to, to sit in with those chats and uh, he, uh, he he obviously learns to how we're breaking it down and ask him questions as well and, and, and the way I go about it is uh, you know, I ask questions but I'm not trying to trip them up I'm, I'm looking for their thoughts because at the end of the day they're, they're the guys that are sitting uh, or standing on that little blue island on the ice, on their own, you know, it's their thoughts. It's they're the ones that have to process the game at, at light speed, basically. Um, so, so yeah, the questions are are there to to try and trip them up. There's there's no kind of right or wrong answer. It's more about how they perceive the game and how they read it. And they've all got different styles as such. I mean, even me as you know the the casual hockey fan as such. You see um, Curtis play the puck a lot more where Callum maybe doesn't do that quite so much. Are you encouraging them to develop their their own style or are you encouraging them to develop a, a, a shark style or a best practice style? How, how does how does that work? Yeah, so you, 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 uh, you help build on their own style that they've currently got. Um, you know, when, they, when they're at this age... Um, and the skill level, you're you're just trying to build on that foundation that they've already established, um, and then you know when we break down the games, we'll try to give them multiple different looks for the same situation, because you know when you get to a league like this, um, these players are, are smart as well. They're intelligent. They, their hockey IQ is really high, so they they can quickly figure out if a goalie is a, a, is giving them the same look on the same play every single time, they'll figure them out real quick. So, uh, yeah, so we're building on the foundation, but we're also giving them multiple tools in their toolbox for, for certain uh, situations. That's quite interesting. So you're saying that the attacking players can sense how a goal he's going to play and then take take action on that. So what's your message to the goalies? Either cover that body language or do different things that they're maybe not so comfortable doing yeah we're trying to work in things that they've maybe they're, they're, they're not as comfortable doing um but 
but we're trying to get them to incorporate that in practice and and get kind of give me feedback and see how they feel and something might might work for them we keep running with it and, and, and build on it and see if they're comfortable enough to use it in the game other things they don't like so we'll just kind of throw that out and, and move forward but um you know it's it's uh i would say in the last 10 years in all sports um the goaltender position in hockey has changed the most between the way the guys play the game between the the equipment you know and then the speed of the game that's coming towards them. It's, I think that, that position's changed the most in the last 10 years across the whole of the sporting world. Okay, tell me more about that. How, how would, what would we see as fans? Um, you know, the, the kind of, the, the, the non-technical goalie mind, if you want to, if you want to kind of say it like that, is, yep. Some some people say, well, why is the goalies always on their knees these days, right? Well, the, their pads are, are made to rotate and, and create a, a big ceiling blocking face. Um, that's how they're designed to rotate on their legs. Whereas back in the day when I played, your pads were quite tight on your legs and they never rotated like that. So we, uh, you know, and then the, the guys are a lot more um, composed uh, with their movements, their their even though their equipment sizes have reduced slightly, their the actual players themselves are bigger and more athletic, and uh, the way they're getting trained is, is, you know, to be more a little bit more systematic in, in their approach and how we read the game. It used to be the goalie was just get in the net and stop the puck. Now, you know, with the way goalies have to play the puck too, they they got to be that third defenseman back there, you know, and. Uh, know how to read the game, know how to play the certain scenarios. And and basically, you're, now, compared to back in the day, um, goalies are much more efficient with less effort. All right, and that's quite interesting. Both our, our, our goalies um, are big, big guys as, as well. Is there an element of you get involved in their their gym sessions or things like that, or are you telling them to work in particular areas or is that just down to them? Uh, the the off-ice stuff, yeah, is just down to them. Unless they were to bring something up to me, um, I, I don't get involved in that. Um, you know, maybe if I was there in person, it, it might be a different story, but um, I'm not I'm not a specialist when it comes to that. Um, you know, I would, I would tell them to go and, and look up there is there is a few people in, in the the kind of hockey goalie community um, that are that do specialise in the off ice side of it um, that you can just basically go see them on YouTube and, and pick up some stuff off of them. Okay, that's that's interesting. I mean, I know from previous conversations with with you, Colin, you're you're not necessarily a fan of goalie stats. You think they're maybe a little bit. Um, unfair in some way so what I'm going to ask is how how do you determine the areas for these guys to work on if we're not going in stats and things like that yeah stats lie right the, the let's just say for example Curtis is you see that he's let on three goals on I don't know say 15 shots yeah and um, but all three of those goals come from you know uh, breakaways say right just for example well somebody just looks at the numbers and they're like well that's not very, very good right he let on three goals on 15 shots but there were there were breakaways so it's it's obviously a lot harder to, to stop it's not like there were uh, a, a shot from the blue line say that he saw the whole way then you're expecting him to save that so stats lie a little bit um so as far as w what i see i'm i'm, I'm looking at trends uh in their game by by watching the instat reports that uh, spud sends me and uh yeah we, we break it down then and, and look at the certain scenarios how he's playing it again I, i'm looking for his thoughts on how he's how he's reading it both of them callum and curtis are really good at, at, at breaking it down themselves as well and, and giving their thought process in that certain situation 
most of them as soon as it even start the clip actually starts they're already like oh yeah i remember this one um so they're both uh they've both got a high hockey iq which is great right it makes my job a little bit easier and uh yeah we, we, i'm saying we see those trends and we run through the scenario and, and how we can how we can either improve it or just give it another another look and like i'm saying another tool in his toolbox to make the same save how do you determine how much improvement there's there's been then um win, wins and losses that's ultimately what it comes but, down uh, to isn't it right it, it, it's basically it yeah yeah i'm trying to win i'm trying to help the sharks win some more games right ultimately and and uh being that the the playoffs at the end of the season, um, and then for there, as, as the guy said on on your podcast the other day, once you're in the playoffs, anything can happen. So, but I also try to just gain gain some momentum for the goalies, gain some confidence, um, and make sure that obviously the D are comfortable with either of the guys back there. Right, we want a a kind of one A one B situation there. That so. Whoever's in net any given night against any given team, we've got full trust in them and uh, they're going to give us a chance to, to win a hockey game. They're both really good goalies and they really share the workload. Um, does that cause an issue for goalies in general or do they want to be playing all the, the time or do they want to be sharing that workload? Because I know there's the goalkeeper union and we know they kind of bond together, but what's your thoughts? Yeah, there's definitely the goalie union. It's... Uh, some goalie tandems it's stronger than others um uh so, you know you've got i've seen goalie tandems that hang out 24 7 almost any together the other ones that are just at the rink and, and and it's all fine whichever way as long as you've both got a common goal helping the team but you could pretty much ask any not just goalie right any hockey player any player in any sport right to, that you just want to play you yeah. just want to be trusted to, to be the, the guy um but ultimately you, you also got to realize that there is another guy with you that's in plays the same position that's that's pretty good as well and 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 support them wherever you can if 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 they're in the net whether it's uh you know a timeout whether it's in between the periods for the game after the game just just having that if you're not the guy playing that night just being that support system yeah, I mean, I'm going to ask the the, the cheeky question because you talk about the goal goal union and you talk about the both Callum and Curtis having a high IQ and you're obviously very articulate and a consultant and all the rest of it. The old joke is you've got to be a bit a bit a bit touched to be to be a goalie. Um, how difficult a position is it really? Uh, probably the one of the hardest positions in sports right that's that's what i'd say but i'm pretty biased but these days the 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 goalie uh personalities have changed um used to be that it was they were kind of a bit crazy to be in goals um but i, I say that that was when back in the day when the equipment wasn't very good um you had to be willing to uh, Put your body on the line, right, and, and get hit with that uh, puck. Whereas now they're they're almost bulletproof because the equipment is so good. Um, even at a young age, the equipment is so good. Uh, you know, they're almost bulletproof. So, uh, I'll tell anybody, I'd rather get hit with a puck at 80, 85, 90 mile an hour than I would getting uh, steamrolled by a defenseman mid ice. Because uh, I've had that happen to me as well, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'd take a puck any day. So the, the the their personalities have have changed over the years. They're not as crazy as people uh, deem them to be. I think that's a fair answer because Callum and Curtis are really nice nice guys. You wouldn't class them as outrageous in any way, would you? Yeah. Would you put it this way? Would you rather block a puck with Callum and Curtis's equipment, or would you rather? Try and block a puck with, I don't know, just say Callum McGill, for example, right? 
with, uh, with only he's only basically his eyes covered right with a half visor. I'm, I'm, it's, it's I, good, I, I know who I'm choo choosing. It's it's a good question, but see, it's my podcast. I don't have to answer these questions. I'm hiding behind the <laughs> I'm hiding behind the plexi, like any sensible person watching you guys, right. these warriors. No, I mean I think it's a fair point. You actually see players who are blocking shots and the the bench gets up for it and all the rest of it, but they're hobbling off, and your goalies are yep. getting peppered with shots all the time, aren't they? And it just looks cool as anything when they pluck it out there and toss it around and <laughs> just right face off to the oh, left of me. Does. Yeah, yeah, it does. And, and obviously the goalies have got the cool gear nowadays too, right? When they're getting them all color, color coordinated with their team and their their mask painted and all that, right? It's 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 a really uh, aesthetically, it looks really good, right? So absolutely, it's, cool. it's a cool, it's a cool position. Unless you get the the jerseys covered in puck marks and all the rest of it, but we'll we'll skip over that. Yeah, uh, white white jerseys get a bit of a mess, actually. Yeah. Um, a little bit more about yourself as well, because I mean, every Sharks fan will 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 know you, but you're also doing um, work in America with is it the Odessa Jackalopes as well just now. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, this is my uh, second season with the Desa Jackalopes in the North American Hockey League. Um, so yeah, I, I work with those guys, and <clears throat> similar to uh, Callum and Curtis, uh, you know, I speak to those guys uh, and break down games. Those guys, I, I text quite a bit, um, so we talk almost daily through text, and then when work and family commitments. Uh, allow I'll meet those guys on either at home in Odessa or sometimes on the road if they're playing closer to Houston. Um, like I saw them uh, just before the New Year in Corpus Christi, which is about a three-hour drive for me. So I drove down and saw them there. Um, so yeah, working with those guys and being fortunate. In the last, the you know, last year and this year, I've I've managed to uh, get my goalies a commitment to the NCAA Division One. Level, so it's pretty good. Which is which is just which is just huge, isn't it? Yeah, it takes a lot of a lot of time and effort and dedication by you know the athletes through through their kind of career and to get there and get a and get a ride. At, at, uh, you know, when I say a ride, it's a, a, a commitment, a scholarship. At, um, some pretty big schools. You know, my goalie last year, Greg Oros, was he got to University of Alaska Anchorage. And my guy this year, uh, Quentin Sigurdsson's uh, committed to play at Northeastern next year, which Northeastern's in Boston, and uh, they're it's a it's a pretty prestigious school because they are surrounded by Princeton, Harvard, Brown, you know, all the Ivy League schools. Yeah. So they've they've got to be kind of up up there to compete with, not just for athletes, but for general students, you know, to actually want to go to study there. So. Yeah, it's a big deal for those kids and, and their families, and yeah, it's it's great to be to have had a small part in that in that kind of journey. So. Well, you continue to give loads to ice hockey and then goalkeepers in particular, and I think the Sharks are really pleased and lucky to have uh, your advice. Before we go, Colin, as I and you watch all my podcasts because you know who wouldn't they? But you know the last question I'm going to ask you, isn't it? A message to the fans. Oh, really? Just keep keep turning up. It's you know you you guys are lucky to be in in uh, a town that has such such a a good level of hockey happening this season. Uh, um, so yeah, like everybody else is saying, keep coming to the rink, keep uh, bringing friends and family with you, and and bump up those attendances even more. And I know that the the, the guys on the ice would will feed off that and and. Uh, yeah, it helps him get get even more wins, and it's it's great. It's great to see the rink so busy, and you know, well, we all know how how good a facility the ice bowl is, right? How well run it is. The ice is fantastic. Cause it's the reason that for six years in a row I took a my goalie camp there, you know, because you, you get treated better than any other facility I've been to in, in the UK, and uh, so yeah, it's a long long may it continue. Colin, thank you so much. Before you go, I was just going to ask a little bit about your goalie camp. Are you doing that again this year, or is you giving it a miss this year? Unfortunately, not. Yeah, last year that was my last year, so um, 
it's but there there is going to be a goalie camp, so um uh, I, I guess I can give a plug to John Russell, um that's Gary Russell's brother. Yeah. He uh, he coached at my camp for six, the six years, so he's kind of taken over the the the, the role of uh, running a camp there. So um so yeah. So I think he's already sold out, um, which I, pre- I think pretty much everybody that that signed up has been going to my camp for years. So, uh, so yeah, it's great that, that the the kids in the UK are still getting that opportunity in Scotland. So, so yeah, it's going to happen next summer or this summer coming when John Russell goaltending. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Colin, for joining me this afternoon. Really appreciate your time and really appreciate all you're doing to help our Sharks uh, goalkeepers grow and develop and I'm sure I'll speak to you again before the end of the season Yeah, I appreciate it Andy thanks for having me and uh, happy birthday and uh, let's go Sharks